Welcome back to the Hawkeye Garage. I'm Joe. This week we are working on mountain bikes, so stay tuned. Uh, yep, that's right. It is a new mountain biking season. Well, it's been a mountain biking season for a couple months now in Iowa, but I'm finally getting around to doing some upgrades again on my 2021 Trek Roscoe 7. Uh, if you saw last year, I did a couple overview videos uh, on this. Did a couple uh, small mods, got the rear hub uh, fixed up under warranty uh, from Trek. Uh, go check those videos out if you're a Roscoe owner and if you're if you're having rear hub issues, you're definitely having rear hub issues unless you've had it fixed already. Um, but this week we are going to be adding some Eagle. Yep, that's right. Uh, this week we are going to pull the old crank set and bottom bracket out and we are going to upgrade to some SRAM GX Eagle components. Um, there's not really anything technically or mechanically wrong with my cranks or my bottom bracket, um, but last year the more I rode, I was made more painfully aware uh, that these cranks are definitely longer than I'm used to. My full suspension bike that's, um, well, some of it's there, some of it's over there, and some of it's down there, and some of it's over there. It's getting uh, refinished right now. Um, had shorter cranks, and I definitely realized very quickly that I uh, preferred the little bit shorter cranks. Um, the bottom bracket that is currently in this bike is just a square taper. You know, they work. There's definitely nothing fancy about them, um, but if we're going to be swapping out cranks to shorter cranks, um, our options are limited without upgrading, and uh, why wouldn't we upgrade while we're at it? So we're gonna start tearing th some things apart, and I'm gonna start talking you through about the parts that I chose and why I chose them. All right, uh, I've got two different cameras going here, so I'm gonna do my best to talk to you guys and show you close-ups. Uh, of the bottom bracket and everything down here. I have already started by breaking the pedals loose and the bolts on either sides of the cranks. I've also uh, gone ahead and removed the chain. Um, so this, as I go along, if you want real detailed information on how to do this, there's lots of videos. I had to resort to some videos to figure out which ones are righty tidy and lefty tidy and uh because some of them are reverse thread um so go ahead and check that out we're just going to go through real quick here uh, on tearing the roscoe apart and talk about why i chose some of the parts that i chose specifically um for the roscoe because it's kind of confusing um on what's available and what uh, different companies call things so we'll go ahead and remove the pedals, race face Chester pedals. Um, I have some pedal uh, boots here, uh, or some crank boots, some race face crank boots. I don't know if these are going to fit uh, those new uh, cranks or not. We'll put those up there. You're also going to need a couple specialty tools um, that you can buy on Amazon, um, relatively inexpensive. Uh, if you are not sponsored by a park tool and you don't have them, uh, you can pick up relatively inexpensive ones, um, you know, all over the place on the web. Uh, so far, we've just been using Allen wrenches um, and Allen sockets, technically, is what I've been using because I can put them on a um, ratchet. So we've got that all apart. Our first uh, specialty tool, this is a square taper uh, cranked uh, pulling tool. You're gonna need this to get these cranks off of this um, square taper bottom bracket. So you're gonna thread the first part in, uh, get that. You don't need to like Hercules it down, but you do want it to be snug. So that's plenty. Then we're gonna run this center part in and that is what's going to push the crank arm away from the rest of the bottom bracket. Um, you might notice that I do, I did add a uh, fun, F-U-N-N, -N, I don't know if they call it fun, uh, chain guide uh, there on that built-in bracket on the, and I'm hoping I don't have to pull that off. I didn't even think about that. I don't think it's gonna be an issue. It's a little snug. There we go. So that is the first crank off. These came uh, factory with a, let's see, I believe it's a 30 tooth 
uh, chain ring, just a round chain ring, and it is a three, uh, three millimeter offset that has to do with the fact that it's boost spacing and a one by 12. Uh, basically, it's saying that it's bumping the chain ring out further because you got so many stinking gears in the back. That's kind of where it breaks down. Hold on to that, we're gonna need that uh, in a little bit. We'll go ahead and pull this other crank off real quick. All right, as you can see, I've pulled uh, both cranks off and I went ahead and pulled that uh, chain guide off there too, just to give us uh, a little bit more space to work with. This is gonna come to our next specialty tool. This is a square taper tool. Uh, as far as I know, there's only like one size and one style of that. Um, and I did break this loose um, just because. This is one that is uh, lefty, lefty tidy, <laughs> um, righty, Lucy uh, to get that uh, bottom bracket out. Uh, so we're just gonna thread that out and it's probably gonna be, you know what, it's actually uh, in pretty good shape, pretty clean. I may uh, probably go ahead and put these up for sale. Uh, the cranks in it, bottom bracket, everything is in good shape. Like I said, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, dings here and there, um, but I since I wanted shorter crank arms, uh, just made sense to go ahead and upgrade all of it all together. So why did I choose what I chose? I already have a SRAM NX drivetrain uh, to begin with, so I just decided I would stick with SRAM. I'm not planning on replacing my cassette or my derailleur or my shifter. Yes, NX is kind of the bottom end. I really don't have any complaints uh, about it, and I suppose at some point it's inevitable that I'll uh, crash and break one of those parts, and then at that point, maybe I'll choose to upgrade. Um, so the next uh, logical choice really is NX or GX, unless you wanna go crazy expensive on the SRAM. And I was just gonna go with the NX. Um, it's not that big of a price difference, um, and everyone talked about how much better the GX was. I'm like, it's cranks. Like, how how much am I get, personally? How much am I going to notice? And talk about weight difference and stuff. So I went ahead and looked up the weight difference. The uh, weight difference between the NX and the GX, they're uh, all both. They're just aluminum. Um, is like 3.9 ounces. It's a specific amount of grams. I don't remember, but that's almost a quarter of a pound. Um, that's fairly substantial. Um, you're gonna probably notice that. Um, and then combined with just what was available uh, for parts in stock in the crank arm length that I wanted, I ended up with GX. So I have the GX crank set. Um, I will add part numbers down below so you guys will know exactly what you need uh, to order. I've also got the matching um, SRAM dub BSA bottom bracket. Don't ask me what dub or BSA stands for. I don't know and I haven't been bothered to look it up. Um, these are really simple to install. You will need another specialty tool. I will help you guys out with that once we get there. Um, comes with a bunch of spacers um, because bikes have different setups as far as spacing um, with boost and gears and stuff. Uh, there is resources online on to tell you which combinations of things you need. I had to resort to Facebook uh, and asking because I could not find it. Um, but I have a picture, I will show it here. Uh, and it kind of uh, tells you for what you have, what you need to use as far as the spacers are concerned with your bottom bracket. Let's go ahead and get this installed. All right, I've got the left side in. All of these parts are marked really well, left and right. Um, they have arrows on which direction you should tighten them. Uh, make sure you use grease, even if it's a part where you don't think that you need grease. We have aluminum on aluminum and plastic on metal and steel on aluminum. It's always best to just put some grease um, on everything. So I'm going to tighten this um, drive train side, the right side, uh, down and it's threaded backwards. I wanna show you guys real quick. I saw this online, a guy um, used Teflon tape on the threads of his bottom bracket, um, just a couple small uh, wraps uh, along with the grease, obviously, to help take up any microscopic gap, if you will, uh, in between the threads. And he said it really just kind of tightens everything up really nice um, and just takes 
any little bit of slop out of the threads. And that actually did make a lot of sense to me. So I've got a little bit of Teflon tape on there and my grease. Um, I've got one spacer. In the box, there'll be two aluminum spacers and those go on the inside of the threaded pieces. Uh, so we're gonna put that on like so, and then we'll put that in there and um, screw that on. You'll notice I've already got the crank coming through on the other side just to help line everything up. So we'll get that on there, snug that up. And then uh, based on the fact that I have a 12 speed and I have a chain guide, um, it said to use a two mil. So it had other sized spacers. Um, and this will go on the outside um, in between the, the crank set and the actual uh, crank and sprocket. Time to tighten that down. This is the wrench that I got off of um, Amazon. It's actually, so it's got two different sizes on there and then this plastic piece gives you two more sizes. Uh, I will drop a link for this uh, for you guys I th because there, apparently there's lots of different sizes of these. I already had one of these. It's actually this one right here um, for a similar uh, style pass-through bottom bracket from my full suspension and turns out it was a different size uh, for all the teeth that are in here. So we'll go ahead and put that on there. It is 50 newton meters which is the equivalent of uh, that. <laughs> tight enough. I had to move the chain guide, I had to loosen it, the guide part, and move it all the way up so that I can actually install this first, install the crank, um, and then lower the guide part back down over the chain where it needs to be once I have the chain on because there wasn't enough room to uh, get these screws on with the crank on. <laughs> and this comes with a 32 tooth round chain ring. My stock SX one had a 30 tooth um, round chain ring and I was going to swap them out uh, just to keep the gearing kind of the same um, until I took them apart and I realized how much lighter this chain ring uh, was. And so I'm gonna run this one, see how I like it. I will probably end up going oval uh, in the future, I've run Oval before, I really like them, um, and that's what I will probably do. So, let's go ahead and put this on, take an eight mil um, Allen, and just start threading it uh, together. This is just normal righty-tighty uh, threading, and of course, I will get this on the ground where I can actually put more pressure on it and torque it properly um, to, to where it should be. But since it's just kind of sitting here, we'll just get it snugged up um, and tight. That is buttery smooth. That is so nice. Um, I'm seeing all that for now. Um, and it is installed. Let's go ahead and fast forward, get the uh, crank boots and the pedals put on and set it back on the ground. Well, that pretty much wraps it up. Thanks for sticking the video. I know it's a little bit longer, but it's kind of detailed if you haven't done this before and I tried to cover as much as I could. Um, I have driven or written it, driven it. You can tell I'm used to working on cars. Um, I've ridden it around the block and it made a big difference. Uh, I, I knew that it would make a difference, obviously, uh, but even just riding it around the block, I could tell um, much, much better. And spoiler alert, I actually have taken it out on the trails and ridden it. It is so much better. The bike feels so much more solid. Uh, I feel like there's less flex in the frame. Um, now I just need to do something about this rear hub. We'll see what happens in the future with that. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, turn those notifications on. We drop a video every Sunday, sometimes Wednesdays, mostly 4x4 stuff, a lot of Toyota stuff, 4Runner, uh, Lexus GX, uh, DIY off-road, family adventure type stuff, and a lot of mountain biking. You can see uh, from earlier in the video, my uh, homemade bike stand has evolved, hopefully making it easier for me to film some stuff. I actually have some things over on the workbench here for the next mountain bike video, probably next week. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, follow the links in the description down below over to my Instagram, my Facebook, where I post uh, a lot more often and a lot of day-to-day -day just life things as well as the YouTube stuff. And uh, until the next video drops, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.